So many people these days are excited about the opportunity for humanity to expand beyond Earth onto Mars, including Mars-based robotics founder Daniel. They're building this foam structure with the intention of having this autonomous robot print habitats for humans. This was the first try, but in this video, we're going to see some of the things that didn't go well, some of the solutions Daniel came up with, and even the V2 habitat that they're building now. Towards the end, we'll even get a look at some of the multi-use arms that will attach to the robot. Let's get into it. My name is Daniel Skaber. I'm the founder of Mars Base Robotics. I'm building uh, robots that print buildings um, with the hopes of intentionally, or with the hopes of one day printing on Mars. I'm experimenting with a lot of different materials, a lot of different methods um, to produce a structure that's much larger than the robot that makes it. So it's a mobile robot that can make a much larger structure than itself. We're building the first prototypes on, on our property here in North Carolina, uh, near Asheville, um, and it'll be available for rent uh, on Airbnb uh, once we're finished. So look forward to seeing you guys. Foam isn't the strongest material in the world, so they're finishing the interior with fiberglass to give it more tensile strength. Ultimately, this will be surrounded with dirt, so it's important that it doesn't collapse. At first, I wanted to print the foam layer all the way to the top so that I would have an indoor space to work on. Uh, the following steps, uh, I was originally going to do uh, concrete with reinforced carbon fiber. I needed a structure, the, the, the print to be within an inch of uh, the intended tolerances. Um, and. I made it nearly, nearly to the top and I started to take measurements of uh, how stable and, and dimensionally accurate the structure was and I found out that it was not. Uh, it caused a lot of problems, uh, had to cut the whole top half off, off of the structure um, to save the bottom half essentially. Um, in, in that time I started thinking about different materials. Uh, drop the concrete and carbon fiber entirely. There's actually a suggestion by one of your uh, one of your followers that suggested, oh, you can just spray that foam with FRP and you'd be done. And I was like, I don't know what FRP is. So I looked it up uh, and I really liked the idea. So uh, I bought a FRP spray machine and uh, this is a few days in and I'm trying it out and uh, I think it's gonna work out really well. With the structure, I needed it to be uh, dimensionally accurate, uh, especially for the following steps, um, to work well. Um, after taking measurements, I said that uh, it wasn't, so I attached a router to the end of the... Sorry. <laughs> attached the router to the end of an arm and machined the surface down uh, to be accurate and uh, in, the, in the perfect sphere. So um, now that that's done, you can see where it's been machined here. Um, this part still not because you can see how this is this is one of the spots that was warped. And it, it got pushed in right there, so I still have to machine that out. But uh, once that's all ready to go, we're gonna try a different method entirely after um, this first bottom half is complete. So it's gonna it's gonna suck in there pretty quick. Set. Daniel's going to let me test the newest addition to his system, this FRP spray, which will add strength to the building. Awesome. Yeah, you can see how it works pretty well and it's pretty easy. It was pretty easy, but I think I may have been spraying from a bit too far back. Let me know in the comments the appropriate spraying distance. Now we're rolling out the fiberglass to achieve a strong adhesion. So uh, moving forward, I'm going to try a couple different strategies. I uh, wasn't too thrilled with how the foam print uh, came out. I'm going to need to buy an expensive uh, foam uh, proportioner that mixes the chemicals exactly. Um, I did some tests with my current system and I was getting way off proportion um, and it was causing inconsistencies in the foam. Um, I can show you a piece, it, it was just squishy. So a couple layers of squishy foam led to 
huge problems later on. As I added weight to it, it kind of shifted everything. Um, so I need really consistent foam. If it's mixed with proper proportions, it's nice and sturdy um, and it, it hardens quick and it expands uh, like eight to one expansion, um, which is great. Uh, but I, there was a couple of comments that said, oh, this was never gonna work on Mars. The weather there is too cold and uh, it's too windy. So I'm gonna try a couple different strategies. Uh, one is print the foam and immediately afterwards, let's say like a couple of rows after the foam is printed, just immediately spray with, uh, with, the, with the fiberglass. Um, and again, like the materials right now are, are up for grabs. Uh, on Mars, it might be completely different materials. I know there's basalt you can get on Mars. Um, there's other polymers that you can use other than uh, polyester that I'm using. I'm just using it because it's pretty cheap. But uh, there's lots of other materials that could be used with the same, same sort of method. But another idea that I'm, I'm trying out is an, is an air form. So if I can figure out a way to um, deploy an air form like autonomously, um, around the robot, then I could print the structure directly onto that surface um, and essentially I could print a lot quicker. So instead of building layer by layer and going really slow because I need to let that layer cure, I can set up a fan and, and spray, let's say, a, a 10 inch fan and just whip up a structure in a, in a couple of hours. Just really just inflate this air form and start spraying the inside with with uh, different materials um, and, and and finish it really quickly. Um, won't have the problem with the weather, um, which has just been a nightmare. Um, and uh, I'm really excited for that. So I'm gonna finish this one up to the half, and then I'm gonna attach an air form to the top half and and try that different method. But uh, I have a, a smaller air form um, that I could show you, and uh, I think you'll once we go inside, you'll get a feel for what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, right now I just laid out laid out an air form. Uh, it has a tube on the bottom that I'm filling with water. That's what's going to hold it down to the ground, um, and I'm going to inflate it uh, with this blower. So uh, if I could figure out a way for this to all happen with the robot and just deploy this air form around itself, um, that will completely change how I intend on printing. Instead of printing layer by layer, I could print. Uh, let's say a lattice structure, um, I could print, like imagine a greenhouse. You can't print a greenhouse lattice structure um, layer by layer, but with an air form you can. So uh, I'm excited to try this out, but if, uh, if you, any of you guys have any ideas on how to automate this so that this deploys automatically around the robot, that would be uh, super helpful. So this is uh, an air form. Uh, I made it with one roll of painter's plastic and, uh, and two rolls of uh, shirt tape for, uh, What's it for? A stucco. Stuc it was meant for stucco, but it works perfectly well for this painter's plastic. Um, and uh, let's let's go inside and check out what it's what it's like inside. So I'm inside of an air form. Blow up a bubble around the robot, and have the robot start printing onto the surface of the bubble. So instead of printing layer by layer, I could print any structure you want, any design you want, where you want windows. Doors um, can all just be printed the same way like an inkjet printer would print on a piece of paper. So this is just one surface, um, but you can print any picture you want onto it. As we stand in here, you can feel, feel the temperature rising. It's only been inflated for a few minutes, but eventually it's going to get really hot in here, uh, which is great. On Mars, it's too cold to use foam, um, but blow up a bubble change the atmosphere inside and now you can print with any material you want. Yeah, so if you want to see how, where, how this goes, if this actually works or not, uh, follow, follow me on Instagram, Mars Base Robotics, um, and I'll, I'll post some videos on, uh, on the progress here and, uh, and hopefully this works and uh, we'll have a place to, to rent out on Airbnb uh, pretty soon. Things don't usually work perfectly the first time, but that's what engineering is all about. And Daniel's out here getting his hands dirty, trying things for the first time. We need more people like that to bring construction automation to reality. Okay, so not exactly automated construction. Uh, this is uh, gonna be the entrance for uh, the Mars base house. Um, on Mars, probably there will be a lot more tunnels, so you won't need so many entrances, but an airlock is, is what I'm building. So um, this is just gonna be a hand, hand layup of uh, fiberglass, um, and it'll be attached to the dome, and, and then 
varied with, with the dome. Original, this is a 3D printed uh, wall. This was the first wall that I printed in my garage. Uh, printed layers of foam. Um, and then, I don't know if you can see the, the little black dots there. That's carbon fiber reinforcement, um, followed by an inch of concrete. So um, this was what I was originally going to make, um, but I tested it and I started thinking about building the, the concrete pump and it was just, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, just the amount of material, the, the forces, the, the pressure required to pump the concrete. Um, so I started looking at uh, other solutions. An outer layer of fiberglass, uh, a sprayed on polyurethane foam, which would then be machined down with the robot and then with a finished surface of another layer of fiberglass. And then probably sprayed down with some uh, like plaster uh, or mud um, and then autonomously sanded. So you can set up the robot to sand for, you know, all day long if you wanted to. So it'll be a, a nice smooth surface. Um, but this, this wall section here, we, I was able to uh, also run the plumbing and electrical. So you can see the plumbing right there. And uh, there's the electrical. Up front? Or? Yeah, that was right there, the wire. So those are all robotically attached to the foam before the concrete was, was put in. Um, and you can see how like the foam, the imperfection in, in, in the foam uh, dimensions. So it was kind of like squirrely. But once I got to, you know, 16, 17 feet up, these kind of got worse. Mm -hmm. So um, just with the additional weight of it, um, but uh, I think that could that could be fixed with 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 proper with proper foam system. The machine has three different arms, so it can have three different tools. If I put a tool changer on those, I can maybe have six six different tools. Um, so it's not just a, a printer. Um, it may print some layers, but it may also do machining. It might do sanding, attaching things. So really, just having different arms, different tools that can do different things. I think is what's needed to, to fully automate construction. I'm not just looking to make one part of the structure. I want to make the whole structure and make it autonomous so that the machine just drives up and builds the structure um, and then drives out. So um, this one is a uh, this one was pretty. I don't know if you want to get in on this, but this this was a, a, a stapling machine, um, and the way it works is it uses a, a roll of these. These staples, essentially, it feeds them in. Um, okay, Feed, it feeds them in, and it measures exactly where they are with these little uh, distance sensors, and then that actuates the cutters, so it cuts the staple. Do this by hand, but so then it cuts the staple, and then in one motion, it moves this outwards, and it presses the staple into the foam. Um, and then this little trigger, as it pulls back, it checks if the staple was in all the way. So if you can hear, it, if, it, if it clicks, cool. then, then the staple held. Um, if not, then it would just put in another staple in that spot. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is now gonna be retired. I'm not gonna be doing that anymore, but uh, this is the foam, the foam system. Um, it's got, uh, Every, every, every tool head has its own computer. Um, so it's got sensors, all, they have all kinds of sensors. The foam one has a distance sensor that measures the distance of the previous layers. Um, but uh, the general idea is that different tools for different parts of the construction process. Um, and I can have probably up to six different tools. So just trying to figure out which ones to, which ones are gonna make the cut for the, for the second version of the machine. <laughs> You don't think so? I think it looks terrible. <laughs> well, the trial and error is beautiful in my eyes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's gonna look a lot better when it, when it works well, but uh, um, I thought about scrapping the whole thing. I was just, it was kind of, uh, I, I felt really bad about how much material I would be wasting. So um, I'm gonna save the bottom half and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fiberglass all the way up to the midpoint. Um, I'm gonna shave it down flat and then attach an air form to the top of it to try out the air form method. So um, I think it'll work. Um, 
and I'll know pretty quickly. It's not going to be a slow process. It's going to be a pretty fast one. So um, ne by next time, hopefully this thing will <laughs> be buried and uh, and uh, the top half will be on. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, maybe you'd like some of my other content about construction automation, mostly here on Earth.